So to make sure I have the salt piece right, the way salt fits in is the fact that it's going to dehydrate us and that's what's going to trigger the cascade? It's not going to dehydrate us. Uh, actually, quite the contrary. It's, it, it makes our physiology think that we are dehydrated. When you get dehydrated, salt concentration goes up and a variety of mechanisms are activated saying, oh, I'm dehydrated, I better conserve water. Things like vasopressin, for example, are activated. Things like an enzyme aldose reductase are activated. That's the enzyme that converts glucose into fructose, telling uh, as a signal to help your body ultimately through uric acid make fat so that you can have water. So the the consumption of of salt you know sitting on the couch and, and eating those pretzels day in and day out uh, it, the salt rises in your bloodstream and that's what these mechanisms in the kidney sense they say oh my gosh high salt this this person isn't drinking enough water uh, becoming dehydrated we better put into play these mechanisms so that there's more fat so they can make more water and that will help them survive so you know if you're going if you decided you're going to sit on the couch and, and eat a box of pretzels that are laden with salt, uh, which I used to love, by the way, those big uh, crunchy pretzels. I think they were called Snyder's. They were delicious. But if you do that, the antidote here is just drink a lot of water when you're doing it so that the salt concentration does not go up. Got it. So it's a balance between water intake and, and the salt intake. Exactly right. And uh, you know, we've known for an awful long time that there's a strong correlation with salt consumption and obesity and type 2 diabetes. There is a, an interesting study in the Journal of the American Medical Association where, Association where they uh, had two groups of school children, and outside the classroom of the one group, the intervention group, they put a water fountain. That's the only intervention. And they encouraged the kids to drink water during the course of the day. The other group, status quo, no changes. And the group after a time that had access to water over the school year, there was a 30% reduced risk of obesity in that group. So, you know, I think people don't really understand this powerful connection between salt consumption. Everybody's pretty clued in that, yeah, it leads to high blood pressure, but it makes you fat. So that's something to think about. That's a very important uh, tool you know, in this discussion of uric acid, yes, you want to avoid the fructose and think about the type of alcohol you consume and maybe consider dramatic reduction of your purine intake if you can't get your uric acid level down. But salt consumption plays into this as well. And personally, when you're, you know, getting ready to sit down and eat a meal, do you ever put exogenous salt on that or is that something you avoid now? Uh, there is plenty of salt, you know, obviously in food anyway. I've stalled, stopped using the salt shaker and I'm really gravitating a lot more towards pepper uh, for a number of reasons. Black pepper, especially when we use turmeric uh, in the meal, if it's an Indian meal, because black pepper, papira nigrans, actually helps with the absorption of turmeric, which, as we all know, is really a helpful uh, component of, of your meal if, you know, because anti-inflammatory properties, etc., so I don't use salt shaker anymore. That's, that's correct. If you enjoyed that clip, press here for the full episode. I'll see you over there. And even going from 1970 to 1990, uh, in America, adults consume now a thousand percent more fructose. It's not just the calories. It's not just that it's a sugar. It is a...